I've known Lisa for a long time. Uh, we both live in the Portland, Oregon area. And um, at some point we became friends on Facebook um, after meeting at, at various Andover events in Portland over the years. And um, I was really impressed with, you know, the design she put up every Friday. And I was trying to figure out a way to, um, that she could share it with, you know, a bigger group of alumni. And it's actually easier to do this virtually than, um, than to try to find a commercial kitchen where she can do it in person. Plus, no um, so if there's a silver lining to the pandemic, this, this is one of them. Um, but um, just so mechanically, I mean, this is being recorded. Um, I think what we're going to do, um, we're gonna probably do introductions at the very end. I think we're gonna have um, Lisa go through her, her, her instruction bits and we'll open it up at various points for questions. Um, if you have a question, you know, wave your hands um, in real life or on the screen or, or use one of the functions um, to raise your hand or to, to send a chat question. Crystal and I will be monitoring both of those. Um, and uh, it's a little bit smaller group than we thought it might be. So, so we may be able to keep the, keep the, the lines open and, and let people ask their questions. Um, and then the, the thought was at the very end, um, if people still wanted to stick around and then just spend some time socializing, we would keep the keep the the the, uh, the Zoom going for that after, you know, anybody who has a time crunch has, um, you know, learned learned the techniques. Um, so with that, um, Lisa, thanks for doing this, and um, I'll turn it over to you. Sounds great. So everyone that has dough, dump it out on your counter. I'm not going to use all this. I made a double bat. I told you I have to make some lob cover later. This is what I use to cut. You can use a knife for anything. And I use um, a digital scale only if it feels important to you to be precise at all, just to weigh um, so that the strands are the equal weight, which means they'll be equal thickness. Um, I thought I would, together we can make a, uh, the letter A, an and over A, and um, I'll show you how to do that. And then I'll teach you I'll some, how some of the, the fun things that I do, twists and flowers and little braids that we can use to decorate them. How does that sound? So when I, just by way of background, when I do this, I don't generally plan. So knowing what we're gonna do is a surprise. Usually the dough tells me what it wants to be that week. And it's usually something topical um, or whimsical um, or traditional. But we know we're going to make an A. And most of the designs that I make start with a really simple three-strand braid. And I know all of you can do that. Um, either if you can braid hair, then you can do a three-strand braid. So we're going to make two three-strand braids that will form the, the A. And one of them will be longer so that we can use it to be the cross part. The end over A is a little bit um, thick at the top and the, at the bottom as well. So, um, so let's get started. Go ahead and cut. You want six, use about um, half of your dough to make the outline and then we use half the dough to decorate. So, Cut your dough into six pieces and you're, to, make your two, to make your two braids that are going to form the letter A. Does that make sense? Um, there's no art or science to making to how to do it. I'll, just, I'll show you what I, what I do. Um, with, my, with the balls, I just press them with the tips of my fingers and you can see that it makes them into, it elongates them. And then using um, this part of my fingers, roll back and forth and out to make them longer. How are we doing? I can't, I can't see what you're doing in your kitchen. So does anyone have any uh, questions about this, this part of the process? Um, when you're working with your dough, you may need, um, if it's a little bit too wet, too sticky, you may need a little bit of flour 
um, because having the right um, texture of the of the dough makes a difference when you um, when you're rolling it out, so you get a nice long, so you get nice even strands. Henry, you're not making it. Henry, you're not making. You're not uh, baking today. I am making. I've got my three. I got three strands already rolled out. Oh, aren't you clever and prepared? Well, I know. I, I, I can't I, see that anyone's I, doing it. I feel I've, uh, done it, I've done it with you before. Um, you okay. Does anybody else have any questions? Crystal, now might be a good time to open up the lines for anybody who wants to. Lisa, it's Caroline Langston Jarbo, 86. I am, I am not doing it. I regularly make holla, but I'm not doing it right now because I'm waiting for a workman to show up. Okay. So I'm glad to see that this is being recorded because I want to try to consult it later. You can also, we can also zoom together. I'm happy to do oh it. Oh my gosh, I would absolutely love that. That's fantastic. It's really okay, fun. going back on mute. Okay. <laughs> how, how thick or thin should these be? Doesn't matter. However much you want. There, there's, there's, no, there's absolutely no rules except the ones that we're creating. I think the, the one thing I noticed um, about this is that Lisa always seems to get them really, really thin, much thinner than I could. But I think the camera's a little bit of perspective. I, I think even when she puts the pictures on Facebook, I think the loaves look bigger than they really are. Um, but um, so it, it looks like she's making something really, really big, but it's probably a lot smaller than um, than you think it is. They're about, so this is my pan. They're, they fill, it fills a pan, generally. So if you're baking, you should have a pan and either um, parchment paper or a silpat, so that when you're, as we start working, you're gonna wanna put your work on, directly on the pan because, um, Moving it once you've made your beautiful creation can um, have unintended consequences. About how long are your um, strands? Um, eight to eighteen inches, okay. maybe, or so. Like I said, it doesn't really matter. It's going to. And remember, when you when you so each of these may be thin, but when you when you when there's three of them, it's going to be thicker. Mine keep breaking. She's cut hers. No, no, she had a huge Lisa? Yeah. Mine keep breaking. <laughs> then I, I bet that they're a little bit dry, do you think? Yeah, maybe. Maybe just need to be, be gentle. The I weather's guess. sort of not really good for doing yeast here. <laughs> so you can pat them maybe, would that work? Yeah, I'm sort of sticking them back together. They look more like snakes than they do strands. That's a good start. <laughs> That's a good start. So, right. <laughs> it's like yeast and rain in Florida. It's just yeah. So, making challah on Friday is a traditional Jewish thing that we do. I started when my kids were, my nice little Jewish boys were in preschool, 20 some odd years ago. And we just make regular traditional braids, you know, and maybe put chocolate chips in them because they're yummy. And a couple of years ago, I saw a picture on Facebook of this just gorgeous, gorgeous challah. And it never occurred to me that you could kind of use it like you would use clay to, to create something. And um, so I started playing with it. And then, then I started, then, then odd things started coming out of my kitchen. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do my first braid. I don't know where you are. Some people start braiding from the middle. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. <laughs> uh. <laughs> no hurry. Otherwise I'm gonna get lost. <laughs> like I said, I'm really happy to do it. Um, do another do it another time if if anyone wants to we can do it together and if it if, if I can see your if I can see your counter then sometimes I can help you too with your braid. <laughs> um, 
my snakes. <laughs> They're snakes. <laughs> we can get, I don't, we can just get started just doing the three strands, just doing a braid, you know? Okay. Left over right to the middle, and then right over left to the middle, and you alternate left to the middle, right to the middle. And then you just pinch the ends. That. That's a pretty straightforward braid. I've been playing around with braids uh, of different numbers of strands. I don't know if anyone saw the, the one I made where I braided the chives in, where I did the herbs a couple weeks ago. I usually do four. What? I usually do four braids. That's, four is really, really pretty. It, 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 what's nice about four is that it rises so beautifully. Yeah. I like the tip about starting to braid from the middle. Um, I think it gets so the ends are more even when I do it that way. Yeah, that's what I've seen a lot of people do. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit off at the bottom to make my cross. I've also discovered a new handy tool cheese cutter. Nice as it's because it's real small some and it's wide so that can help too when you're playing with the dough. So there we go. Does anyone have an A yet? Lost me. No. <laughs> <laughs> you want brown paper or you want I that? want brown. I want that and I want brown paper on it. That's with all the dough or just the one no, braid? This is, this is, I mean, this is two braids and um, it, uh, it's just a small part of the dough because really the fun we're going to have is decorating it. So there's, there's a couple of ways, there's a couple of ways that I decorate. So I can't, I can't see, do you need a little more time? Yes. Waiting? Okay. Lisa, I can turn off the spotlight view if anyone wants to show where they are in it um, yeah, at this time. Yeah. So let me do that. Okay. Lisa, I'm wondering while we're filling time here, because I'm still trying to catch up, um, maybe you can give us any troubleshooting tips um, from you know your experience uh, with all of us. Yeah. Um, hey. Yeah. Well, that's another that's another technique too that can that can help, and it makes a nice even um, strand. You're going to probably want to make it um, longer because or thinner because otherwise you get really too chunky, too chunky a piece. Um, let me. So one of them is the is the texture of the the dough. It's easiest to roll if it's if you've got that right sweet spot of moisture um, to dryness because it can be really it can be really difficult. If it's too sticky, you want to add flour. If it's too dry. You just need to be a little bit more gentle because it'll be less flexible yeah. for you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> let me show you. Let me. Well, really, this is just the foundation part, and what I wanted to show you are, are some of the different um, ways that I decorate. So, and we and I can do this again with you while you, you know if anyone wants to do it together. So this is the. Um, oh, that's 
Okay. I'm going to show you how to make flowers. Okay. So I'm going to take a chunk of dough. And like I said, you, you can catch up and I'll show you. I'll show you. Um, I can show you again. But this is really, really cool. So for this, you're going to roll the dough out. Henry, did you like doing this? Have you been adding this to your record? Absolutely. Yeah. I love that, you know, some of you are, are uh, weekly challah breakers and some of you have never done this before. So, but I did, mostly just want you to know how fun it is and how there's really no rules and show you how to do a couple of um, different things that, that you can make your own creations. So this is, these are mostly, uh, when I photograph the dough as soon as I've finished uh, making, the loaf, whatever it's going to be. And then it will, I think in the directions, in any directions, whether it was mine or, it, or your own recipe that you used, once you've made, <clears throat> once you've made your, um, your loaf, you're going to, you're going to uh, want to proof it again. And it will get bigger and it will look a little bit less like what you made. And then you're going to um, brush it with an egg glaze if you, if you reserved some of the egg from your dough, or you need to um, add some more. And the, the egg wash is after the proofing? It's after the proofing, goes right before the oven, right before you put it in the oven. And um, when you put the egg wash on, it's gonna make your dough really sticky. So if you want to sprinkle something on, something traditional like, sesame seeds or poppy seeds or the um, everything bagel seasoning from Trader Joe's is awesome. Um, or um, something, sprinkles, I did that one, you know, sprinkles or um, jimmies or any of the, anything. So it's sticky at that point. Okay, so you can see that I've rolled this out. Put a little bit more flour here. And the reason, the reason why I asked you to have something round and I use champagne glass, right? Little flute, is to have this small circle. And we're gonna make, gonna cut out of the dough a bunch of circles. And I use six circles in each flower. I've done whole, I've done hollow with just wreaths, just round wreaths of, of these flowers. They're really, really pretty. Lisa, do you have a favorite design that you like to, to do? Um, I've never done two of the same, except um, I, I like doing hearts. I think they're pretty. And it's fun to make a letter for, for, for someone, you know, for a special event, for a friend. But I, I mostly like to make things that surprise people. Well, I was always impressed. I mean, always, your, your designs always look so like they're so well planned out and, and having you describe that they're, um, you know, you, they're just sort of organic. You just sort of it's look at the dough and what it wants to be that day. Um, it's, it's totally true. I um, do you remember the one that I this one the arm? Yes. The one. So that day I had I had no idea the dough was ready and I was I, I was zooming I zoom with my sisters every day we play boggle so uh, we were sister boggling and I'm I had no idea what I was going to do and I just started making braids and I, I honestly I just didn't know what was going to happen but. I'm talking to my sisters and I'm making little braids and then I got a text from a friend who um, told me that he had just uh, come from the doctor and he was uh, cancer free and he had that that emoji you know uh, that emoji. Uh, and I, that's it. Uh, so that, that's what it was okay so sorry do we want six circles or, or, or 18 
So you, well, it doesn't, however many you get, doesn't matter. You need six. So you can have, you can have more or less. And you just see how I'm shingling them. I'm just putting them um, next to each other. Again, precision is not important. Mother nature is not very precise. So I wouldn't think that we need to be here. And I'll probably make some more. I think Lisa, you use six circles to make each flower. So if you're gonna make I have six, three so I mean, flowers. Yeah. Right. Okay, so let's see. Uh, I wanna make sure you can see this well. Let me just get a bit closer. So you're just going to roll them over each other. And I'm going to do this two, two more times, so you'll see. And just kind of squeeze with your fingertips. Right, in the can you back up a little bit? We can't, I can't quite see your hands. Thanks. OK. You're rolling them from the top down? Yep. You're rolling all six of them together into one big glob. And then you're kind of squeezing them in the middle part. And then you cut it in half. And it's magic, look. So that it seals the bottom. And then it's made little flowers. And you can separate the petals a little bit if you want. Can you see? So if you use a bigger circle, you're going to get, uh, you know, if you use a bigger, something bigger than this, you're going to get a bigger circle and hence a bigger flower. If you do more or less circles in each in each flower, it'll you know have more or less petals. But it's but they stay together because this is when you cut it, it, it sort of seals it, which is cool. So I'm gonna take these. And I'm going to put them on my A. Like this, you can see. You see? So I could do, um, I could use them, I could put them at the base to do the bottom and the, you know, and then the top. Like that. Actually, I think I will. Or you can, that's what I'm going to do. But you can put them anywhere. You can put them on the sides or all around. You can make more. You can cover the whole thing. So beautiful. So um, I was going to surprise you later, but I'll tell you now. I did. I did pick some, I did pick some hydrangeas and the blossoms are just so pretty, the little, the individual ones. And I really like to decorate with flowers when I can. I usually do it at the end, which I will, but I just wanted to show you because I'm excited. I've got blue flowers. So how are we doing? Do we have some A's out there? Lisa, I'm going to put us in gallery view for a minute so we can see how folks are doing. So just give me one second. Karen, how's it going in Florida? Yay! All right. Big sigh. Great. We have some wonderful. Um, Designs. Anyone else want to show? Oh, perfect. Nice. 
<laughs> do you, did anyone want to do the flower again? Or did you get that okay? So, so that's, that's where we got so far. Is that helpful to have, it, have that up like that so you can see what's going on? Yeah. Okay, so I'll show you a couple of things I like to do. I love the flowers. I think braids are beautiful. And um, who, is, who told me that they use, make a four strand braid? If you, you can make, what I like to do next is to make small braids of different um, thicknesses. I like to make small ones because I think they're just so pretty. Um, and then just use it to decorate. When they bake, they look so, it looks so pretty because oh, you have all the different um, uh, heights and different textures, and it looks gorgeous. Another thing that's fun to do, I can show you this. I'm going to show you. Lisa, we have a question in the chat about if hydrangea petals are poisonous. Do you know the answer to that? Um, they're not, but you're not going to bake. You're just using them to decorate. You're not using them. You're not, you're not baking with them. Okay. Thank you. So, so I just have a little bit of water here and I'm going to, um, take a little strand and I'm just going to put water on it. And then I'm going to take some blue um, sprinkles. And when you put water, it, it's going to make it real sticky. See, and it's coating it in blue. So I think I'm going to do a little blue strand. So I've done this with um, all those toppings I told you about. But I just wanted to show you the, the technique. You can do it with little ones or with big ones. See what I'm doing? Just rolling it. You could be, you could do it on a, um, on a plate or a bowl to keep it, to keep your work surface a little cleaner. So I'm just gonna make a little, A little blue. I've experimented with adding color to the dough and that works well too if you want to do different colors. So, how about this? So those are some fun things you can do with braids. That's just a three-strand braid. Um, and another, another thing is to roll out a little piece of dough. Get this to wet. And coil it up around itself. And so we can make a bunch of those. They look really pretty too when they, the longer the strand, the bigger the coil, the smaller. You make these cute little teeny tiny ones. Cute. I think I still got some blue on the counter. So you gotta be careful when you're using color or other other things. Okay. 
Can I see what Henry's doing? Um, <laughs> I can try to show you. Where how's how's this? I can't see myself, so I don't know what you're seeing. Yeah, I can see your nice shirt. Uh, nice. Nice. Oh so you looks good. Looks good. Does anyone um, else want to showcase their work? What's Scooby <laughs> doing? What's happening? Lisa, can you tell me about refrigerating dough and storing it and then proofing? I, I seem to have, uh, you know, five pounds worth of dough, which is probably more than I know what to do with right now. What do you suggest? Um, you can do, well, first of all, you should definitely stay and make babka with me. Um, <laughs> but um, you can put it in the fridge and it will stop the proofing process. And then you can bring it to room temperature um, another time. You can do that for a couple of days or you can put it in the freezer. Again, the same process. We'll think about, you know, Rhodes frozen dough, right? So you can uh, either refrigerate or freeze it, and all you need to do is bring it to room temperature so that it will, it will get to the, um, it'll, it'll get to the place where you can work with it. You can also braid it and freeze it, freeze it, freeze it braided, and then you can um, just, Again, bring it to room temperature um, and then let it proof and, and uh, bake. This is all also with, did you, use, did you use my recipe or another one? And the reason I asked that this is a really sweet, sweet dough. And you could also use it to make uh, cinnamon rolls. Where you'd roll it out into a rectangle and put cinnamon sugar and nuts on it and then uh, roll it up. Me five pounds. Can you show us a different form except for flowers? Maybe we did the flowers and the swirls. Um, I have a sort of messy part at the top in the middle. I'd like to put something over to guide that. Yeah, I'll show you what I love. I'll show you an idea for that. So um, let's make some really long, skinny braids, three strand braids. And we can use it to be like a vine that will um, that will wrap around the A, and we can use flowers at the end or not. But um, so make a really thin braid. It's so fun. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Thank you for doing this. So wonderful. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm so inspired. <laughs> I'm also going to try your recipe. I usually use the Modern Jewish Mom's Guide to Shabbat recipe. It's um, probably the oil in it, yeah? Yeah, but a sweeter one would be fun. Yeah, so my recipe is, um, like I said, it's basically brioche. It's, it's got a it's got butter, a lot of butter, a lot of butter, um, sugar, and more eggs than your recipe has. And I don't know what that does. Let's, okay, I really don't. So here's a little thinner braid, and I'm gonna have it kind of wind around like this. So just kind of, and you can use that to cover a multitude of sins. So I'm going to make more of those. I like that idea. And then they'll kind of go all around. So the, the four strand, with the four strand, I want to teach you a trick for that. It's a really pretty simple braid, right? So you take a dowel when you've made, when you've, when you've finished your um, dough, when you finish your braid, um, obviously not this big, but a dowel and you just put it on top and you press to make a trough, like a trough. And then you put in the trough um, just circles of dough next to each other. 
and you have this whole str it's like a strand a strand of beads in the center and it looks really 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 pretty you can also just take a little piece like this and um, kind of like like do this kind of thing you know for decoration and so you can put that on top too or on the side oh i know what i wanted to show you so this is a twist it's, it's going to be a double twist so to make this one you want to have a long thin piece because the end up the final length is going to be half half of the length you've got here i made a sweater once i think some of you may have seen the sweater because a lot of this it looks like braiding i mean it looks like knitting so I alternated the three, this three strand braid and this double braid twist. Okay, so you take it in the middle and then you just twist it. So you've got a twist and when you put it, when you put it next to, there you go, put it next to and a three strand braid, you get some nice texture there. Being mindful of the fact that it's gonna get bigger as it proofs, um, try to keep things kind of clean so that you keep your lines. It's really hard to do angular things with dough because it has a mind of its own. But, um, So for kids, you know, for my kids' birthdays, I'd make their letter, the letter um, of their name or the number of their, you know, their birth year, you know, how many, what their birthday is. Um, my youngest son just graduated from college. I made a uh, mortarboard and tassel with his, uh, with his school. I just name on it. You can just use little, um, just, little strands to make a letter, you know. Like L for Lisa. So you can write you can write something on top if you want. And that comes out really pretty when you bake it. So I'm just going to make some little little braids. If you want to do um, a stuffed hollow. Um, I'll show you. you can do that. That's a really fun thing to do too. I'll show you in a sec how that would be. Have you ever made a, a savory hollow, like a garlic hollow, or? I haven't yet. Although my children did win a most unusual home intention contest by making a garlic home intention, but. I have not done that, um, but you'd have to use, you'd want to adapt the recipe. I think that would be really lovely, but you'd have to adapt the recipe because it's a little bit too sweet, I think, for that. Yeah, I um, but I did, I did braid um, chives a couple weeks ago into the three-strand braid, and it, and it was really delicious. It picked up really, really well. How was the garlic hamantashen? <laughs> Just as you would expect, I'll say no more. So if you're making a, um, let me show you about doing a stuffed hollow. I keep my dough covered um, just so it doesn't get too, um, too dry, it doesn't dry out. It kind of forms a crust. And remember that while, you know, all the time that we're working on it, it's proofing, it's getting, it's getting bigger. Okay, so to do something stuffed, you're gonna make a flat, So it's kind of like more of a rectangle. And then what should we put in it? 
Let's put chocolate chips in. I kind of like chocolate chips. You could do this with jam, you could do anything. But the idea is that you're putting something in the middle and then you're, so it's just, and then you're pinching it up. Like that. Hiding those chocolate chips. And then you roll it. So here we have a strand that's stuffed with chocolate chips. It'll be amazing when it's when it's done. Is that, is that how you do your babka? You pretty much do it like a stuffed challah with the chocolate chips in it? No. Oh. Can I do you want me to show you babka now? Do you while you while we're just kind of braiding away? Because I've got it ready to go, I can show you. Sure. Does anyone have any questions on where we are right now? Is everybody good? Are everybody getting, um, feeling they're in a good spot? Talk, but just sit down. We'll start to do that once or twice a week and return calls. Chris, you know, crazy, but honestly, the center are beautiful here and the weather fantastic, etc. Recipe that I use is in the Jerusalem cookbook. And these are the steps. So you take your dough and you roll it out to um, into a rectangle, same as, as if you're making cinnamon rolls, like I said before. That's going to be about 11 by 15. You can see it's, you know, just add as much flour as you need. Last week, I thought that I could make a chocolate hollow by adding cocoa powder to the uh, finished dough. And um, I thought it was a brilliant idea, but it didn't work because it took too, too much moisture out of the dough. It would probably work if you added nuts to that, Lisa. You could, you could um, do the cocoa powder and the nuts and the oil from the nuts when you put it into the food processor should be able to create enough, enough oils to, to And then you can adjust it, you know, if I had made it originally at the beginning, you can adjust the moisture, like you said, um, to, so that it can work out. Yeah. And you can have, if you, you can add color. Um, I did, a, I've done a green shamrocks and I did, um, red, white, and blue by just adding color to the, um, to the dough itself. This is really pretty. Well, my, the dough recipe I use, which is from Melissa Clark from the New York Times, um, with, with oil instead of butter, also calls for orange juice and orange zest in it. And it's less sweet, so it's, it's a bit more, yeah, yeah, I think it only has three tablespoons of sugar, plus the orange juice and the orange zest. Yeah, but I was surprised when I, I did savory toppings or with the uh, chives in it, that it's still, you, you know, the balance of, with the sweet and the savory, it still worked out pretty well. Well, it does. Yeah. Yeah. What I do when I cook. <laughs> For savory, so um, that was why I showed you how to um, add color to the, how to coat the, the strands. I did um, a whole bunch of different savory toppings. I did sesame and uh, za'atar, which is green, a uh, green um, Israeli mix, and uh, sumac, which is red, and 
pepitas, which are green and coconut. So it's fun. And, and then and using that, I just did a, a real traditional braid. But I encourage you to have fun. You know, like I said, there's really no rules unless you're going to the rabbis. And then you have to have a kosher challah. But, but for you and your family, um, it's, a, it's a really fun thing. So, this is enough of a rectangle. And so I made a, um, I made a chocolate filling. You could use Nutella. This is, this filling is, um, Cocoa, dark chocolate, butter, and sugar. And this is often made with with a uh, um, nuts in it, but I, I don't do that. I don't know, kind of anti nut in baking. You don't want to go all the way to the edges. I'm supposed to sprinkle more sugar. I don't know why we need more sugar, but it's super fine. Okay. So then you roll it up. Just thinking it all, just give a little encouragement. I'm, I want to seal the edges so the chocolate doesn't come out, which may or may not work. This is the scary part. So now you cut it lengthwise in half. Revealing your layers that you just rolled. See? And then to make the babka, you, all you do is you twist over each other. And if you put too much filling in like I did, it's even messier. So I'm going to do this fast. See, I'm, it's just going over and over like that. Lisa, it's not a braid, it's just a twist. What? It's not a braid you're doing, it's just a twist? It's just a twist, two pieces over, over each other. Okay. And then you put it in the pan. Nice. Back to Hala. How are we doing? How are we doing with our A's? Do you know, anyone have any babka questions? Let's do a check-in. I'm gonna cancel the spotlight and do a little gallery view so we can all see each other. Brandon, how are you doing? Are you braiding? No, I'm not just observing, but learning. Oh, okay, me too. <laughs> Intently. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Anyone else want to share their creation? Oh, there's Karen. Beautiful. I love it. 
Anthea, your cat is, is, is the cat helping? <laughs> Ooh, Kim, that's amazing. Wow. Oh my gosh. You all did an amazing job. I love it. Um, I'm just curious: is when for the in the registrations, it looked like there were some parents. Is there anybody um, on the phone? Is a parent or on the line? Is a parent? I okay. am Kim. I'm a parent. Yeah. And what year is your student? This is an alum, <laughs> and I have a current rising senior. Okay. But ACE is um, P. I was, I was PA 18. Okay. And the coolest name ever. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, the, the, a, the A doubles for me. So. <laughs> and hi, um, I'm Nancy. I'm a parent. I have a, uh, my daughter will be starting at PA in the fall. Oh, uh, so you're one of our newest members of our family. Yes. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hi, this is Kathy, and I'm a parent of incoming junior. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry that my dog wasn't ready earlier on, so, but it just got ready. I, I don't know, um, um, looks a little bit messy here. So I just uh, made a, enough a D. <laughs> 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 so I'm, I'm, I'm catching up. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. I'm a parent also and an alum. How about that? <laughs> and I'm an alum and my with my parents who are faculty emeriti. Oh, wow. MBA for over 30 years. Yes. <laughs> and do they go back to campus at all? Well, they're 86 and 90 now, so um, no. But um it's interesting because they have chosen their final resting place at some point to be in the faculty circle at Andover. That's how connected they are to the academy that was part of their lives for a very long time. So in a way, I guess uh, that's where it will be in the end. We're not there, but... <laughs> right. Oh, that's so special, though. It is oh. very special. Yes. Here, let me go and say for my dad, who was at PA, the foreign language department, before that at Abbott. So Papa, say hello. You saw hello. my mom before. This is my father, hello. Mr. Krivobach. Hello. hello. You're at Andover for yes. how long? For 22 years. 22 was, years. Was not 27 years. 27 more years. <laughs> and my mother you saw before. There we are. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Oh, it's so nice to see them. Yes. <laughs> what dorms, what houses were you guys in? Um, we, Bancroft, my mom yes. ran Bancroft yes. for a couple of years. Wow. Um, Anthea, probably around our time, actually. And we then were they were in school year abroad, abroad um, ah. from 75 to 77. Yeah. 74. Or 74. Yes, and before that, Abbott, and of course, the first years of PA. Yeah, yeah, I was in that first class of girls, that first That's first right. First I actually have an Abbott diploma. <laughs> oh, do you? <laughs> oh, yes. So you were there at the same time. We overlapped. Yeah, I'm 76, yeah. and you're 77, yeah. so. 77, yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> that was a funny time when we all got to, you know, when the co-ed started. The <laughs> mean, Yes, it was. I mean, we, we had classes up and down the hill at the beginning before we became officially co-ed in, in what, in 75, I guess. Um, I came in 73, 70, the fall of 73 was the first year that we were. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I, that's right. Because I started right. with Abbott my first year and then three years, two years yeah. at PA and one, when my senior year at school year abroad. Uh-huh. 
That's wonderful. Oh, Lisa, I, you're muted. I'm going to unmute you. Um, did we have more introductions? Or I, I, I don't want to keep you too long. I'm going to still be braiding for a while, but I wanted to show you one parting thing. That's yeah. really neat. If you take two strands, the way we, how we started, and we made and we made the A, and you put them together at the bottom and together at the top, you made a heart. <laughs> like so, there's there's so I want to give you my love and thank you for uh, joining me. This is another fun one to do too. You can fill it with things or. Um, just make more braids. But that's an easy way to do something else that's pretty fun. Love that. Thank you so much, Lisa. This has been such a wonderful um, event and opportunity for all of us. So thank you. Yes, thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Anyone that wants to um, you know, do it some more with me, you're welcome. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks, thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I hope everyone has a wonderful day. I will send the recording out um, as soon as it's available. Um, and I think everyone has Lisa's recipe, but I'll include the link again in case anyone wants to try it. And and every, Crystal, everybody has your email, right? If you, oh, yes. I'm sorry. Um, if anyone wants to take a photo of their lovely creation and send it to me, um, we would love to um, collect them. And not sure what we'll do with it, but sometimes it can end up on our Facebook page or Instagram um, and sometimes even in the magazine. So my email address is cmcguire, C-M-C-G-U-I-R-E at andover.edu. And I sent the reminder yesterday. So if you just reply to that with a photo as well, that works. You can also send a thank you, Crystal, to everybody and include my, my uh, contact information. Absolutely. And if you haven't checked out Lisa's Instagram um, account, you definitely should. There's some wonderful, wonderful um, visuals there. Um, and if you're into food or any jam making and other cooking things, check out mine too. <laughs> Excellent. Karen, send it to me and I'll send it out to the group as well. It's pretty easy. It's yum and more. Okay. <laughs> So if anybody wants to do some kind of virtual jam making or cooking or other, you know, let me know. I'd love to. I can teach people how to clean squid, too. <laughs> I'm an eager student for anything. We may have a series coming up here. We may have to do more of these. I love it. Yeah. That would be wonderful. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you so much, everyone.